my sort of job allows me to go into lots of different schools and see what's going on. And I'd worked in a school, um, one of our trust schools, who were using Team SOS. And then I was seconded to to support the leadership team in another in another school, which had some sort of challenge. There were some challenges, behaviour, I think, in particular, um, and also the kind of the site itself. So we, they were very traditional. They were using walkie-talkie based system. Uh, and it didn't really work very well because there were some black spots you couldn't get hold of. There was no coverage. Um, as you're walking down a corridor, all you could hear was the squawk of walkie-talkies, um, often illegible. Sometimes, sometimes you could actually understand what they were saying, so you could hear certain students' names, and they became, there was a certain celebrity among some students, I think, of having their names called out in the walkie-talkie. Uh, and it, re it really wasn't working very well. The staff there were really unhappy with incident management in general. So we basically stole the, the Team SOS idea from another school. The idea was to do a, a trial just with the support team, first of all, the on-call team, um, because that was a small group. Um, and I didn't want to, didn't want to sort of um, put any additional pressure on the support on the teaching team by adding a new system that may or may not be be, be sort of uh, feasible in the future i think in, after about two weeks we then looked at the results uh, how it went how it was going and the feedback from the the um from the on-call team was phenomenal because we'd removed the we worked all our systems had a central controller uh or it was kind of someone would call lots of people on, on walking talkies and yeah and it was it wasn't very clear as to who was doing anything about the about the incident, um, whether or not anyone had picked it up. So the on-call team absolutely loved it. They thought it was brilliant um, because things were not getting missed as they were in the past. And also there was absolute clarity about what the incident was, who it was involving. We had a really strict protocol as to how to how to how we wanted um, uh, requesters to to put the call out, uh, which is something we, we learned from uh, the other school. Uh, and then. We surveyed the requesters, so the, the teaching team, and said, well, how, have you noticed anything different in the last two weeks? To which the, they were um, very, very positive as well. Uh, we fed back to the whole school and said, right, next step would be a sort of wider trial with some people coming in as requesters if they want to. Um, and actually the teaching team at the time, because the old system was, was so poor, really, because, and because the new system had already so, shown such strength, uh, they went straight to full rollout, whole school after two weeks. I think it highlighted to us the the gaps in particular, because the transition points in the school day, because we we got an all team who run to a school schedule, a school timetable, the transition points so between lessons and over lunch, uh, and at the end of the day, um, what we identified was because we actively had to close an incident once it had been resolved. It was very, very clear where an incident hadn't been resolved. Uh, and I think our past system, which was based on teacher's email to a central point and then a walkie-talkie call out um, goes out to the team. Um, it kind of highlighted that those 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 points where we were you know, transitioning between lessons or between break time and lunchtime, um, there were quite a few into quite a few more instances in, in that particular gap than we expected, uh, which probably would have been missed before because it could have been the teacher who was on call period five was on their way to their period six lesson and the teacher who was coming on to the into the on-call team, you know, hadn't got there yet. Um, yeah, so I think that was a biggie. And at the end of the day, and there's, there's, quite, there's nothing, it's quite satisfying to go through the list and make sure they're all everything's ticked off. They know someone's listening. They know someone's there listening to someone, isn't it? <laughs> but they know somebody's there if they need them. So sometimes it can be, uh, we've, um, so one of the instructions we use, one of the commands we've, we've put in um, is please check in on. And that's kind of softer. There's nothing wrong necessarily, but it's just look, just keep an eye on this. Just if you wouldn't mind dropping in. So some teachers don't use that now. We use it quite a lot with uh, if we've got a supply teacher, which at the moment we've had to because of COVID we have supply teachers in. So quite often we've you know, got a supply teacher in, say, a science department, and the head of science might just say, please check in on 
that glass um, just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, we can also use that as well if we know that students have had a, you know, had a wobble or you know, they're not feeling great. We can just check in on. And there's nothing. Yeah, it's it's, no, it's not just a, a punitive, um, you know, sanction giving, but it's also you can be a bit more uh, proactive. And one of the things we we asked quite early on um, was that uh, we went for a single sign-in. So we linked. We linked. Uh, so we used. Um, uh, uh, Microsoft 365. So, Team SOS was was, um, was put onto every was start was put onto the startup uh, for every computer in the school, so that as soon as somebody logged in, uh, it opened up and it automatically opened up. And then they used their school sign in to just sign in uh, to the back to the program itself, which which was an absolute bonus. I think had we have asked staff to have another password, another login, that would have that would have been seen as a significant barrier. And the fact that as soon as we said that to the to team SOS, they were able to to look at that for us and, and then support our IT team to get it sorted out. Um, that was really that was really good. And in terms of the administration of it, I mean, it's very it, it's very straightforward. It's very straightforward. We we went for a, a kind of a, a very quick. I know there's a lot of functionality on it. We pr we probably aren't are not, still not using to its full extent, um, but we're happy with the functionality we are at the moment. It's, you know, it's doing. It's doing uh, at least the job we are we wanted it to do really really well, um, but I know there's there's new sort of, uh, there's new sort of bits, new tools, new widgets coming out all the time to help us look at different things. So we're actually taking part now in the trial that will automatically link up uh, to our smooth wall system. So if a student is uh, is is accessing something they shouldn't be, uh, category four or five information on the internet, that will automatically um, hook up to Teams SOS to alert them. And we can put a zone in there so they know exactly yeah, this is at this student, this location, yeah, or this student um, uh, is, uh, is accessing this information so we can sort of deal with that very quickly. Which again would have happened. We would have got an email automatically, but that would have gone into someone's inbox and that would require that person to, that individual gatekeeper then to be responsible to see their inbox, whereas this can go out to a, a team, the safeguarding team immediately. Um, who won't, who will know straight away now who's read it uh, and also will we'll put protocol in place so that they will put it, yeah, okay, I'm dealing with this. Uh, you know, I can't deal with it because somebody else could get it. So I think that's quite exciting as well. I, I remember walkie talkies and you'd be trying to remember what time something happened. It'd be difficult sometimes you forget which period it was, even you, you know, is it lunchtime or break time? Or, um, and the problem is then all the essential information is, is is transient it's lost so you end up having to repeat. every time somebody new comes into the come, comes into the scene to, to, to take part you have to repeat everything again it, and and it can yeah it can turn to chinese whispers um or critical information can, can just as easily be be missed entirely in terms of we didn't realize how valuable it would be we, we assumed it would just be a response tool, to be honest. Um, but actually having that, that typed up transcript of events, so where we've needed to um, to use the logs to go back over, I think it was a student maybe who said, you know, this didn't happen then, this didn't happen then. Actually, it's by the second. This is, this is exactly what was said, when, who read it, when they read it, what the response was. Um, so that's been quite, I mean, that's been very, very useful and that's allowed us as well to triangulate then between um, so we use another uh, management information system to communicate to parents about um, about incidents behavior positive and negative but in particular it's allowed us to triangulate to identify this person's requesting on call for this incident but this incident's never made it into that management information system yeah it's about making sure that those those bits are not missed uh, it's going for the sort of the certainty over severity sort of route, making sure that these, you know, everything is dealt with. I think getting rid of the squawk is a really big one. We, we were concerned because we, we moved to, um, so the on-call team used uh, mobile phones. So lots of them used their own device, uh, which we packaged up. We, we've got these kind of lanyards um, to make them look like, uh, to make them look less like a domestic device. The black spots in the school uh, where there was no signal, they've been removed because we're now either using school device 
Um, so we've got 3G, 4G outside, all using the school Wi-Fi, which is very good. Look at the system you've got and look at the, 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 the sort of the key points. So we had a we had a controller who then broadcast out to the on-call team. Well, that, that, that entire person, the need for that person now has been removed entirely. So we've spared, we've freed up capacity. We've also made sure that the people who need the information get the information straight away. Uh, because we're not limited on, yeah, we're not limited in the same way on the number of walkie talkies that we used to have. Um, so the system we had was was very, very fragile in terms of its, its ability to cope with um, anything exceptional at all. Uh, whereas now we've got a much tighter system. The whole the whole thing just is, is tighter. Everything's recorded, um, which is invaluable. Uh, in terms of one thing we haven't got around to yet is we, we do a lot Predominantly, ours is still react, looking back at, um, but the next phase to start in September is we're starting to have somebody, the person who would have been controlling, where we've with that capacity we've freed up, we're going to use that person now to start looking at the uh, at the team's SOS reports, so that they can future, start looking to the future, so we can start predicting. Okay, we predict this is going to happen, we predict that. So we're looking for hotspots, we're looking for uh, potential patterns, so we can start to to. So sort of not just triage problems, but actually remove them entirely. Uh, we've, we're thinking already about a lockdown system using it, the alert function as our lockdown alert. Yeah, that that sort of I don't know, that high end kind of emerges a bit. Um, I don't think the current system, lots of the current systems, are not particularly great at.